The Kalasha Kalasha, Kalasa, Nuristani, Kasivo, Urdu, Kalash or Kalash, are a Dardic indigenous people residing in the Chitral district of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province of Pakistan. They speak the Kalasha language, from the Dardic family of the Indo-Aryan branch. They are considered unique among the peoples of Pakistan. They are also considered to be Pakistan's smallest ethno-religious community, practicing a religion which some scholars characterize as a form of animism, and other academics as a form of ancient Hinduism. The neighboring Nuristani people of the adjacent Nuristan, historically known as Kafiristan, province of Afghanistan, once practiced the faith adhered to by the Kalash. By the late 19th century, much of Nuristan had been converted to Islam, although some evidence has shown the people continued to practice their customs. Over the years, the Nuristan region has also been the site of much warfare, which has led to the death of many endemic Nuristanis, and it has seen an inflow of surrounding Afghans to claim the vacant region, who have since admixed with the remaining natives. The Kalash of Chitral maintained their own separate cultural traditions. Culture the culture of the Kalash people is unique and differs in many ways from the many contemporary Islamic ethnic groups surrounding them in northwestern part of Pakistan, they are polytheists and nature plays a highly significant and spiritual role in their daily life. As part of their religious tradition, sacrifices are offered and festivals held to give thanks for the abundant resources of their three valleys. Kalasha Desh the three Kalash valleys is made up of two distinct cultural areas, the valleys of Rumbar and Bumboret forming one, and Barir Valley the other, Barir Valley being the more traditional of the two. Kalash mythology and folklore has been compared to that of ancient Greece, but they are much closer to Indo-Iranian pre-Zoroastrian Vedic traditions. The Kalash have fascinated anthropologists due to their unique culture compared to the rest in that region. Language The Kalasha language, also known as Kalasha Moon, is a member of the Dardic group of the Indo-Aryan languages. Its closest relative is the neighboring Kohar language. Kalasha was formerly spoken over a larger area in South Chitral, but it is now mostly confined to the western side valleys having lost ground to Kohar. Customs There is some controversy over what defines the ethnic characteristics of the Kalash. Although quite numerous before the 20th century, the non-Muslim minority has seen its numbers dwindle over the past century. A leader of the Kalash, Saifullah Jan, has stated, "...if any Kalash converts to Islam, they cannot live among us anymore. We keep our identity strong." About 3,000 have converted to Islam or are descendants of converts, yet still live nearby in the Kalash villages and maintain their language and many aspects of their ancient culture. By now, sheikhs, or converts to Islam, make up more than half of the total Kalasha speaking population. Kalasha women usually wear long black robes, often embroidered with cowrie shells. For this reason, they are known in Chitral as the Black Kafirs. Men have adopted the Pakistani shalwar kameez, while children wear small versions of adult clothing after the age of four. In contrast to the surrounding Pakistani culture, the Kalasha do not in general separate males and females or frown on contact between the sexes. However, menstruating girls and women are sent to live in the Bashalini, the village menstrual building, during their periods, until they regain their purity. They are also required to give birth in the Bashalini. There is also a ritual restoring purity to a woman after childbirth which must be performed before a woman can return to her husband. The husband is an active participant in this ritual. Girls are initiated into womanhood at an early age of 4 or 5 and married at 14 or 15. If a woman wants to change husbands, she will write a letter to her prospective husband informing him about how much her current husband paid for her. This is because the new husband must pay double if he wants her. For example, if the current husband paid one cow for her, then the new husband must pay two cows to the original husband if he wants her. Marriage by elopement is rather frequent, also involving women who are already married to another man. Indeed, wife elopement is counted as one of the great customs together with the main festivals. 
Wife elopement may lead in some rare cases to a quasi feud between clans until peace is negotiated by mediators, in the form of the double bride price paid by the new husband to the ex husband. Kalash lineages separate as marriageable descendants have separated by over seven generations. A rite of breaking agnation tabra chin marks that previous agnates tabra are now permissible affines. Derak, clan partners. Each cam has a separate shrine in the clan's Jestak Han, the temple to lineal or familial goddess Jestak. Festivals The three main festivals of the Kalash are the Chilam Joshi in middle of May, the Uchao in autumn, and the Kamas in midwinter. The pastoral god Sorazin protects the herds in fall and winter and is thanked at the winter festival, while Goshadai does so until the Pul festival Pu, from Asterisk Purna, full moon in Sept, and is thanked at the Joshi Josi, Zosi festival in spring. Joshi is celebrated at the end of May each year. The first day of Joshi is, "...milk day", on which the Kalash offer libations of milk that have been saved for ten days prior to the festival. The most important Kalash festival is the Chamos Kamos, Gona Chamos Yat, Koer, Chitrimas, from Asterisk Katarmasia, CDIAL 4742, which is celebrated for two weeks at winter solstice c. 7 December, at the beginning of the month Chamos Maastricht. It marks the end of the year's fieldwork and harvest. It involves much music, dancing, and the sacrifice of many goats. It is dedicated to the god Balamain who is believed to visit from the mythical homeland of the Kalash, Siam, T -Siam, Siam for the duration of the feast. Food sacrifices are offered at the clans' Jeshtak shrines, dedicated to the ancestors. At Chalmos, impure and uninitiated persons are not admitted, they must be purified by waving a fire brand over women and children and by a special fire ritual for men, involving a shaman waving juniper brands over the men. The old rules of the gods are no longer in force, as is typical for year end and carnival like rituals. The main Chalmos ritual takes place at a talk tree, a place called Indra's place, Indrungkot, or Indrayayan. Indrungkot is sometimes believed to belong to Baluman, South Brother, in Doctor, Lord of Cattle. Ancestors, impersonated by young boys, Onyesta, pure are worshipped and offered bread, they hold on to each other and form a chain cf, the Vedic Anvarambana and snake through the village. The men must be divided into two parties, the pure ones have to sing the well-honoured songs of the past, but the impure sing wild, passionate, and obscene songs, with an altogether different rhythm. This is accompanied by a sex change. Men dress as women, women as men Balumain also is partly seen as female and can change between both forms at will. This includes the festival of the Budulak, Budulak, the Shepherd King. In this festival, a strong prepubescent boy is sent up into the mountains to live with the goats for the summer. He is supposed to get fat and strong from the goat milk. When the festival comes, he is allowed for a 24 hour period only to have sexual intercourse with any woman he wants, including even the wife of another man, or a young virgin. Any child born of this 24 hour period is considered to be blessed. The Kalash claim to have abolished this practice in recent years due to negative worldwide publicity. At this crucial moment the pure get weaker, and the impure try to take hold of the very pure boys, pretend to mount them, like a hornless ram, and proceed in snake procession. At this point, the impure men resist and fight. When the Nagayero song with the response, Han Sarias, from Asterisk Samriate, flows together. CDIAL 12995 is voiced, Balumain showers all his blessings and disappears. He gives his blessings to seven boys representing the mythical seven of the eight Devalog who received him on arrival, and these pass the blessings on to all pure men. In myth, Mahadu had cheated Balumain from superiority, when all the gods had slept together a euphemism in the Shawalo meadow, therefore, he went to the mythical home of the Kalash in Tisayam to come back next year like the Vedic Indra Rigveda 10 If this had not happened, Balumain would have taught humans how to have sex as a sacred act. Instead, he could only teach them fertility songs used at the Chalmos ritual. He arrives from the west, the Kadi Kafir Bashkal Valley, in early December, before solstice, and leaves the day after. He was at first shunned by some people, who were annihilated. 
He was however, received by seven Devalog and they all went to several villages, such as Batrick village, where seven pure, young boys received him whom he took with him. Therefore, nowadays, one only sends men and older boys to receive him. Balumane is the typical culture hero. He told people about the sacred fire made from junipers, about the sowing ceremony for wheat that involved the blood of a small goat, and he asked for wheat tribute for his horse. Finally, Balumane taught how to celebrate the winter festival. He was visible only during his first visit, now he is just felt to be present. During the winter, the Kalash play an inter village tournament of Chikit Gal ball game in which villages compete against each other to hit a ball up and down the valley in deep snow. Religion the Kalash people are divided equally between the adherents of Islam, and those that practice the traditional Kalash religion, which some observers label as animism, but scholars regard as a derivative of the ancient Indo-Aryan religion described as, "...a form of ancient Hinduism." According to Sanskrit linguist Michael Witzel, the traditional Kalash religion shares, "...many of the traits of myths, ritual, society, and echoes many aspects of Rigvedic religion." but not of the post-Rigvedic religion that developed in India. Kalash culture and belief system differ from the various ethnic groups surrounding them but are similar to those practiced by the neighboring Nuristanis in northeast Afghanistan before their conversion to Islam. Various writers have described the faith adhered to by the Kalash in different ways. University of Rochester social anthropologist and professor Barbara A. West, with respect to the Kalash states in the text Encyclopedia of the Peoples of Asia and Oceania that there Religion is a form of Hinduism that recognizes many gods and spirits, and that given their Indo Aryan language. The religion of the Kalasha is much more closely aligned to the Hinduism of their Indian neighbors. E. J. Michael Witzel, in his book The Origins of the World's Mythologies, makes reference to the pre Hindu Kalash. The journalist Frud Bazan incorporates all of these perspectives, describing the religion followed by the Kalash as being a form of ancient Hinduism infused with old pagan and animist beliefs. The isolated Kalash have received strong religious influences from pre Islamic Nuristan. The prominent and noted linguist Richard Strand, who is the sole modern authority on Hindu Kush languages, spent three decades in the Hindu Kush. He noted the following about the pre Islamic Nuristani religion. Before their conversion to Islam the Nuristanis practiced a form of ancient Hinduism, infused with accretions developed locally. They acknowledged a number of human-like deities who lived in the unseen deity world Kamviri D. Lu, cf. Sanskrit Deva Laka. Certain deities were revered only in one community or tribe, but one was universally revered as the creator, the ancient Hindu god Yama Raja called Imro in Kamviri. There is a creator god, appearing under various names, no longer as Father Heaven, but as Lord of the Nether World and of Heaven, Imra. Asterisk Yama Rajan, Mara, Death, Nuristani Yama Rajan is a creator deity called Dezau whose name is derived from Indo-European asterisk Dig H to form Kati Nuristani Des. To create, Cdial 14621, Dezau is also called by the Pashto term Kodai. There are a number of other deities, semi-gods and spirits. The Kalash pantheon is thus one of the last living representatives of Indo-European religion. More importantly, there is an Indra-like figure, often actually called Indr -N -K or Varendra -K, Warayan, Waran, asterisk Aparendra. As in the Veda, the rainbow is called after him. When it thunders, Indra is playing polo. Indra appears, however, in various forms and modern disguises", such as Sajagor also called Shura Varan. Warren doctor or in Warren is the mightiest and most dangerous god. Even the recently popular Balumain has taken over some of Indra's features, he comes from the outside, riding on a horse. Balumain is a culture hero who taught how to celebrate the Kalash winter festival He is connected with Siam, the mythological homeland of the Kalash. Indr has a demon like counterpart, Jestin, who appears on Earth as a dog. The gods Devalog, Dewalik, are his enemies and throw stones at him, the shooting stars. Another god, Munjam Malik, Munjam. Middle. Mala from Arab, Malik. 
king is the lord of middle earth and killed like the indra his father Mahandeo, Mahandeo CF, the Nuristani Man, Mandi, is the god of crops, and also the god of war and a negotiator with the highest deity. Jestak, Jestak from asterisk Jiestha, or asterisk Destri, is the goddess of domestic life, family and marriage. Her lodge is the women's house Jestak Han. Dizalik, Dizalik, the sister of Dezal is the goddess of childbirth, the hearth and of life force, she protects children and women. She is similar to the Kafiri Nirmali Indo-Iranian asterisk Nirmalika. She is also responsible for the Bashalini Lodge. There also is a general pattern of belief in mountain fairies now often called by their Persian name, Peri, but still called Asparas in the Rajatarangini, Suchi Suki, now often called Peri, who help in hunting and killing enemies, and the Virati, their violent male partners. They live in the high mountains, such as Tirich Mir, but in late autumn they descend to the mountain meadows. The Yak are a separate category of female spirits of the soil or of special places, fields and mountain pastures. Noted linguist and Harvard professor Michael Witzel summarizes the faith practiced by the Kalash with this description, in myth it is notably the role of Indra, his rainbow and his eagle who is shot at, the killing of his father, the killing of the snake or of a demon with many heads, and the central myth of releasing the sun from an enclosure by Mandi snake. Kalash religion and culture has also been influenced by Islamic ideology and culture. Their belief in one supreme god is one example of Muslim influence. They also use some Arab and Persian words for their god. Topic ritual Topic These deities have shrines and altars throughout the valleys, where they frequently receive goat sacrifices. In 1929, as Georg Morgenstiern testifies, such rituals were still carried out by Kalash priests priest from Istike to praise a god. This institution has since disappeared but there still is the prominent one of shamans the deities are temporary visitors. Mahandeo shrines are a wooden board with four carved horse heads the horse being sacred to Kalash extending out, in 1929 still with the effigy of a human head inside holes at the base of these shrines while the altars of Sajagor are of stone and are under old juniper, oak and cedar trees. Horses, cows, goats and sheep were sacrificed. Wine is a sacred drink of Indr, who owns a vineyard Indruakan in the Kafiristani Wama Valley contained both sacred vineyard and shrine idol and altar below a great juniper tree along with four large vates carved out of rocks that he defends against invaders. Kalash ritual is of potlatch type, by organizing rituals and festivals up to twelve, the highest called Buramor one gains fame and status. As in the Veda, the former local artisan class was excluded from public religious functions, however, there is a special role for prepubescent boys, who are treated with special awe, combining pre-sexual behavior and the purity of the high mountains, where they tend goats for the summer month. Purity is very much stressed and centered around altars, goat stables, the space between the hearth and the back wall of houses and in festival periods, the higher up in the valley, the more pure the location. By contrast, women, especially during menstruation and giving birth, as well as death and decomposition and the outside Muslim world are impure, and, just as in the Veda and Avesta, many cleansing ceremonies are required if impurity occurs. Crows represent the ancestors, and are frequently fed with the left hand, also at tombs, just as in the Veda. The dead are buried above ground in ornamented wooden coffins. Wooden effigies are erected at the graves of wealthy or honored people. Topic music Topic Kalasha Traditional music mainly consists of flute-like instruments usually high in pitch, singing, poetry, clapping and the rhythmic playing of drums, which include the whack, a small hourglass-shaped drum, this is made from chision pine wood, kuuric pine nut wood, or azai apricot tree wood. It is played with a larger drum called a do. For the kalasha dances, do, a large drum, this is played with a smaller drum called a whack. For the kalasha dances, the smaller drum giving a lighter counterpart to the larger one. <laughs> <laughs> Location, climate and geography Located in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Pakistan the Kalash people live in three isolated mountain valleys, Bumboret Kalash, Mumure, Rumbar and Barir These valleys are opening towards the Kuna River, some 20 km south downstream of Chitral. 
The Bumboret and Rumber valleys join at 35 degrees 44 minutes 20 seconds north 71 degrees 43 minutes 40 seconds east 1640 meters joining the Kuna at the village of Aran 35 degrees 42 minutes 52 seconds north 71 degrees 46 minutes 40 seconds east 1400 meters and they each rise to passes connecting to Afghanistan's Nuristan province at about 4500 meters the Barir Valley opens towards the Kuna at the village of Gabarat 35 degrees 40 minutes 8 seconds north 71 degrees 45 minutes 15 seconds east, 1,360 meters. A pass connects the Barir and Bumboret valleys at about 3,000 meters. The Kalash villages in all three valleys are located at a height of approximately 1,900 to 2,200 meters. The region is extremely fertile, covering the mountainside in rich oak forests and allowing for intensive agriculture, despite the fact that most of the work is done not by machinery, but by hand. The powerful and dangerous rivers that flow through the valleys have been harnessed to power grinding mills and to water the farm fields through the use of ingenious irrigation channels. Wheat, maize, grapes generally used for wine, apples, apricots and walnuts are among the many foodstuffs grown in the area, along with surplus fodder used for feeding the livestock. The climate is typical of high elevation regions without large bodies of water to regulate the temperature. The summers are mild and agreeable with average maximum temperatures between 23 degrees and 27 degrees Celsius, 73 degrees to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Winters, on the other hand, can be very cold, with average minimum temperatures between 2 degrees and 1 degree Celsius 36 degrees to 34 degrees Fahrenheit. The average yearly precipitation is 700 to 800 mm 28 to 32 inches. <laughs> <laughs> Genetic origins Genetic analysis of Y chromosome DNA (Y-DNA) by Furizat et al. (2007) on Kalash individuals found high and diverse frequencies of these Y-DNA haplogroups: L3A 22.7%, H1** 20.5%, R1A 18.2%, G 18.2%, J2 9.1%, R** 6.8%, R1** 2.3%, and L** 2.3% Genetic analysis of mitochondrial DNA (mtDNA) by Quintana Murchi et al. (2004) stated that the Western Eurasian presence in the Kalash population reaches a frequency of 100%, with the most prevalent mtDNA haplogroups being U4 34%, R0 23%, U2E 16%, and J2 9%. The study asserted that no East or South Asian lineages were detected and that the Kalash population is composed of Western Eurasian lineages as the associated lineages are rare or absent in the surrounding populations. The authors concluded that a Western Eurasian origin for the Kalash is likely, in view of their maternal lineages. A study of ASPM gene variants by Mekhal Bobrov et al. 2005 found that the Kalash people of Pakistan have among the highest rate of the newly evolved ASPM haplogroup D, at 60% occurrence of the approximately 6,000 year old allele. The Kalash also have been shown to exhibit the exceedingly rare 19 allele value at autosomal marker D9S1120 at a frequency higher than the majority of other world populations which do have it. A study by Rosenberg et al. 2006 employing genetic testing among the Kalash population concluded that they are a distinct and perhaps aboriginal population with only minor contributions from outside peoples. In one cluster analysis with K equals 7, the Kalash formed one cluster, the others being Africans, Europeans, Middle Easterners, South Asians, East Asians, Melanesians, and Native Americans. A study by Lee et al. 2008 with geneticists using more than 650,000 single nucleotide polymorphisms SNP samples from the Human Genome Diversity Panel, found deep-rooted lineages that could be distinguished in the Kalash. The results showed them clustered within the Central, South Asian populations at K =7. The study also showed the Kalash to be a separated group, having no membership within European populations. <laughs> <laughs> European descent the estimates by Kamar et al. of Greek admixture has been dismissed by Tumas Kivasild et al. 2003 stating that 
Some admixture models and programs that exist are not always adequate and realistic estimators of gene flow between populations. This is particularly the case when markers are used that do not have enough restrictive power to determine the source populations or when there are more than two parental populations. In that case, a simplistic model using two parental populations would show a bias towards overestimating admixture." The study came to the conclusion that the Kalash population estimate by Kamar et al is unrealistic and is likely also driven by the low marker resolution that pooled southern and western Asian specific Y chromosome haplogroup H together with European specific haplogroup I into an uninformative polyphyletic cluster II. Discover Magazine genetics blogger Razab Khan has repeatedly cited information indicating that the Kalash are an Indo Iranian people with no Greek ethnic admixture. A study by Furazat et al. 2006 concluded that the Kalash lack typical Greek haplogroups such as haplogroup 21. Some of the Kalash people claim to be descendants of Alexander the Great's soldiers. Economy <inaudible> <inaudible> Historically a goat herding and subsistence farming people, the Kalash are moving towards a cash-based economy whereas previously wealth was measured in livestock and crops. Tourism now makes up a large portion of the economic activities of the Kalash. To cater to these new visitors, small stores and guest houses have been erected, providing new luxury for visitors of the valleys. People attempting to enter the valleys have to pay a toll to the Pakistani government, which is used to preserve and care for the Kalash people and their culture. History and social status The Kalash are considered to be indigenous people, with their ancestors migrating to Chitral from Central Asia in the 2nd century BC. The Kalash were ruled by the Metar of Chitral from the 18th century onward. They have enjoyed a cordial relationship with the major ethnic group of Chitral, the Ko who are Sunni and Ismaili Muslims. The multi-ethnic and multi-religious state of Chitral ensured that the Kalash were able to live in peace and harmony and practice their culture and religion. The Nuristani, their neighbors in the region of former Kafiristan west of the border, were converted, on pain of death, to Islam by Amir Abdur Rahman of Afghanistan in the 1890s and their land was renamed. Prior to that event, the people of Kafiristan had paid tribute to the Metar of Chitral and accepted his suzerainty. This came to an end with the Durand Agreement when Kafiristan fell under the Afghan sphere of influence. Recently, the Kalash have been able to stop their demographic and cultural spiral towards extinction and have, for the past 30 years, been on the rebound. Increased international awareness, a more tolerant government, and monetary assistance has allowed them to continue their way of life. Their numbers remain stable at around 3,000. Although many convert to Islam, the high birth rate replaces them, and with medical facilities previously there were none, they live longer. Being a very small minority in a Muslim region, the Kalash have increasingly been targeted by some proselytizing Muslims. Some Muslims have encouraged the Kalash people to read the Quran so that they would convert to Islam. The challenges of modernity and the role of outsiders and NGOs in changing the environment of the Kalash valleys have also been mentioned as real threats for the Kalash. During the 1970s, local Muslims and militants tormented the Kalash because of the difference in religion and multiple Taliban attacks on the tribe lead to the death of many, their numbers shrank to just 2,000. However, protection from the government led to a decrease in violence by locals, a decrease in Taliban attacks, and a great reduction in the child mortality rate. The last two decades saw a rise in numbers. In recent times, the Kalash and Ismailis have been threatened with death by the Taliban. The threats caused outrage and horrified citizens throughout Pakistan, and the Pakistani military responded by fortifying the security around Kalash villages. The Supreme Court also took judicial intervention to protect the Kalash under both the Ethnic Minorities Clause of the Constitution and Pakistan. S. Sharia law penal code which declares it illegal for Muslims to criticize and attack other religions on grounds of personal belief. The Supreme Court termed the Taliban's threats against Islamic teachings. Renowned pro-peace Pakistanis, such as Imran Khan condemned the forced conversions threat as un-Islamic in 2017. Wazirzada became the first Kalasha man to win a seat in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Provisional Assembly. 
He became the member of the Provincial Assembly PA on a minority reserved seat. Topic: <laughs> Appearances in popular culture. Topic: The Kalash people's reputed connection to Alexander the Great is the basis of the famous Rudyard Kipling story, The Man Who Would Be King. However, it takes place among the Kalasha of Nuristan, then known as Kafiristan, in nearby Afghanistan. The story was made into the film The Man Who Would Be King in 1975, starring Sean Connery and Michael Caine. The Kalash are briefly visited in the first episode of the 2004 BBC television series Himalaya with Michael Palin. The program featured some cultural background and current customs, highlighting the claim to be descendants of Alexander the Great as well as some of the stunning scenery of the Kalash homeland. A pivotal chapter in the World War II novel The Tenth Unknown by J. Vallant Nalan Sampat revolves around the Kalash people and their unique customs. See also Co people Dardic people Hunza people Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic Bibliography Topic Topic External Links Topic IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, Kalash Protection and Conservation of an Endangered Minority in the Hindu Kush BBC article on Kalash women Muslim impact on religion and culture of the Kalash Zahir Ud Din in Al Adwa 43 to 30, 2015. Kalasha Heritage A website used by the Kalasha people to promote, conserve and protect the Kalasha tangible and intangible heritage Investigation of the Greek ancestry of northern Pakistani ethnic groups using Y-chromosomal DNA variation <laughs>